Welcome to Tallinn, indeed. So, Jelle, bienvenue à Tallinn. Excellencies, dear participants of uh, the Tallinn e Governance Conference 2017, it is my great honour and um, great pleasure to welcome you here. And you can see Estonia really is a real place. It is not only a virtual place which exists in the uh, internet. This is the image which may occasionally emerge from news and articles about uh, E-Estonia. And every Estonian outside of this country feels it because friends uh, ask them to remedy their iPhones and computers. The fact that so many of you have traveled uh, long distances from so many different countries to be with us today, this already demonstrates how keen you are to harness the power of technology for better governance and a better life for your people. It is our devotion here also to work together, keeping in mind the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030, an ambitious agenda for all governments to improve the lives of uh, people everywhere. A quarter of a century ago, when Estonia restored its uh, independence, we were a poor country. The crucial question stood in front of us how to overcome the legacy that the Soviet Union had um, left us during occupation. And our response was, we need to build up quickly a modern, efficient and democratic, transparent state. The radical reforms were carried out, of course, in every walks of life. And the forward-looking idea was to harness the innovative potential of information and communication technology already then. Neither we nor anyone else, in fact, could know 20 years ago how important really internet or ICT would become and what role it would play in the organization of the state and society. Thus, the choice we made in favor of technology was definitely not an easy one. The decision to invest the scarce resources of a newly restored independent state, not into repairing potholes in the roads or scrambling oh, schools or Jesus. buildings, but into equipping those school buildings with computers and an internet connection. In hindsight, we can agree that the Tiger Leap program, as it was called, gave um, the entire Estonian society the momentum to make the digital leap in the future. School children, having become computer literate, brought their newly acquired skills home and infected their parents and also grandparents with um, the digital bark. Priorities changed for the families. Quite often, instead of buying a new refrigerator, money was saved and invested into a computer and an internet connection. Resulting from that digital leap of faith, fast changes have shifted the fundamentals of our society in many spheres of public life, in business, in governance, and also obviously in the very way members of our society lead their lives. Today in Estonia we talk about e-governance and e-state, but what is much more important is that we are really a digital society. A society where technology is um, thoroughly interwoven into the fabric of uh, everyday life, we have e-school, e-health, e-voting, even e-police. It is indeed true that um, in Estonia, we actually already born e-citizens. How does that work? It's a no not a laughing matter. It's a background operation nobody even notices. A newborn baby's data is entered into the population registry, equipping him or her with a digital identity. And this happens in the background while a doctor is entering data about the baby born into the medical system. It's an automatic process, therefore. Digital identity is generated when a baby is born. And now parents can tag to this identity the name of, uh, of course, of the, of the baby. And they can do so from their laptop, if they so wish, without leaving the hospital room using their own ID cards, not going to any office. Because, you know, no young parent wants to spend time in governmental office. They want to spend time with their child. When kids grow up, they start exercising their own digital right 
to be a digital citizen. For example, this year, the right to vote at local elections is also given to 16-year-olds. These young people, with the rest of the population, will be able to cast their ballots via the e-voting platform without having to leave their beloved digital environment. The code for e-voting platform, by the way, is an open code. Everybody can try to crack it and hack it. It's out there for years. Nobody has managed. As during the transformation years, Estonia always felt um, the support of our international partners. We now don't only want to talk about what we have done, but um, we feel particularly proud to be able to give something back to the international community. What Estonia can offer to the world today is indeed our experience about how our digital society works and how governance needs to change to meet the demands and expectations of e-citizens. But nevertheless, this is about our society. E-governance is not about technology. It is about using technology to bring a change to society, above all to governance, making governance transparent, citizen-centered, and definitely not corrupt because it's transparent. Connected databases, they make it impossible for people to present alternative versions of yourself to different parts of government, both for private persons and business entities, indeed. As the World Bank's last year's report, Digital Dividends, demonstrated, the countries to gain most from the digital revolution are those where technology goes hand in hand with relevant changes in the so-called analog sphere the legal system, economy, and developing the skills of people. Added value that digital technologies provide is more transparent business environment and definitely also more accountable government. The digital society enables, above all, the free and free-thinking citizens. Their interactions with state become effortless. For citizens, being the center of the system does not only mean high quality public services. It also means having more opportunities to effectively have their say in politics, not only on social media platforms or street demonstrations, but also by engaging the citizens in meaningful dialogue with the government permanently. This is the open government of the 21st century. This is what we believe we all need a culture of governance where the power holders and citizens are de facto partners, sharing a responsibility for the future of their country. An e-state in its complexity cannot be directly imported from one state to another. Absolutely each nation must build their own. After all, a state is always also a tradition and new technologies must embrace that. They must never replace that. However, what can be transferred though, this is knowledge and experience how to build up well-functioning systems. Also the knowledge on where we tried and failed and then did better. Knowledge transfer, this should be the main subject of our conference here in Tallinn. And this is what we are ready to offer with open hearts to you so that you can then go back home and go one better than we have done, and then come back and teach us what you learned about your societies and about technologies. I'm very proud that Estonia has chosen the furthering of good governments via ICT as one of the key priorities of our country's international development cooperation activities. Smart and knowledgeable use of ICT is a very efficient tool for bringing about fundamental changes. The benefit to government institutions, businesses and citizens from e-services offered by government and also private businesses far outweighs the initial cost of investment made to create and maintain these e-services. We have been able to offer more efficient public services and the efficiency gains from digital signature in Estonia today are estimated to be as much as 2% of the GDP per year. And you know what? 
it's a very egalitarianly distributed saving. Because these 2% benefit most of all simple people and small and medium-sized companies, as neither has the capacity to handle big bureaucracies. The big ones, they can manage. The rich ones, they can manage. We help small people. As it currently stands, the Estonian development cooperation portfolio, it is managed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It holds 38 active projects aimed at implementing ICT solutions to governance. Many of these projects are financed jointly by Estonia and other donor countries or organizations. Estonian experience has thus reached countries like Moldova, Ukraine, Afghanistan, Tanzania, Mauritius, Kenya, Angola, Palestinian Authority, and many more. We also cooperate with the funds and programs of the United Nations. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our international partners for their substantive and impactful cooperation. Many of these projects are implemented by the E-Governance Academy, a professional center of excellence, which is a very good example of a functioning public-private partnership. Each passing day convinces us more of the fact that people really like to use digital applications. A smartphone has become a household item used for business or pleasure in almost all countries of the world, including those countries where cable-based internet connections are still a luxury. In such a world, it is increasingly difficult to convince the citizens who are used to modern technology that the document would need to grow a pair of legs to travel from one government office to another, or explain why a citizen would need to queue in long lines in some government office in order to acquire a permit or an approval or a social subsidy. Actually, this is no more a luxury for citizens from governments. For governments nowadays, it has been, become a vital need to accommodate digital services and become digital communicators with their citizens. Because if all people and all businesses in internet, governments risk to be out of it. You don't want to be the last one to force people to go somewhere. It would undermine your authority and your ability to act and com communicate and connect to your own citizens. So obviously, it is now a must rather than a choice. Ladies and gentlemen, in exactly one month from now, and for the first time in history, Estonia will hold the presidency of the Council of the European Union. We accept this role with full responsibility because a strong and developing European Union is Estonia's goal. We will do what other EU member states as well as the EU as a whole expect of us and what we ourselves keenly wish to contribute towards, an ever-growing digital capability of the European Union. Among Estonia's priorities for our presidency are cross-border services, security and trust in digital services. We also wish to use our upcoming presidency to enhance the capacity of the EU to support the digital development in the African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states and in other partner countries. The conference which begins today offers a great opportunity to brainstorm how to do it, all sides involved in the best possible way. Dear fellow citizens, the digital disruption changes societies at least as much as industrialization did, probably more. So we need to develop our capacity to foresee and to be pre prepared for this fundamental change. I am very convinced that um, the future trends will pose a challenge to our current understanding about work, about welfare, and also about global security. Cyber attacks which have recently taken place in many corners of the world challenge us to strengthen international cooperation in stopping and catching cyber criminals. The field of cybersecurity is particularly well known in Estonia as our country was a target of cyber attacks a decade ago. For this reason, Estonia has prioritized cybersecurity on the international level for a long time 
And it is our continued concern now as we aspire towards becoming a member of the United Nations Security Council for the years 2020 to 2021. But cyber risks must not mean the withdrawal of governments and honest citizens from cyberspace. Quite to the contrary, it is our obligation to use technology for good causes and thus build the trust of citizens into it. Similarly, as we do not abandon our streets to crooks, we fight for that space. We should also fight for cyberspace. We should never withdraw. To conclude, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the organizers of this conference, to the E-Governance Academy as our host, and also to ACP Secretariat and the Estonian Minister of Foreign Affairs for supporting the event. I thank you for your advice and also for your financial resources. Looking around here, I can say that the effort has already paid off as there are delegates from more than 100 countries present. I wish you fruitful discussions and also a pleasant stay in Estonia. It may get colder outside, but in our hearts, we warmly think of all of us. Thank you.